Hello everyone, welcome back to my English Law channel. So I'm carrying on with criminal law and the topic I'm going to look at today is, is criminal damage. Um, so there's a Criminal Damage Act 1971 and it um, sets out what these offences are which are all categorised as uh, criminal damage. Um, so there's basic criminal damage as for section 1.1, aggravated criminal damage as for section 1.2. So basic is not so bad. If you aggravate something, you make it worse. There's a more serious kind. There's arson, as in section, point, uh, section 1.1 and 3. Arson means purposefully starting a fire. Not a fire in your fireplace, not a barbecue or a bonfire, something like that. No, 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 burning something down. Um, uh, okay, then there's aggravated arson, which is sections one, uh, section 1.2 and 3. So that's an unusually bad fire that you've, you've deliberately started, like somebody else's property or uh, endangering life and limb. Then um, under section two, um, threatening to destroy or injure property is also a crime, even if you don't actually do it to say, I'm going to burn down your house, but you never do. That's still a crime. Or I'm going to key your car. That would still be a criminal offence, even if you don't actually key the person's car. Um, there's another th uh, uh, crime under Section 3, which is possession with intent to destroy or damage property, as in possessing certain items with which you could easily do so, even if you don't even try to d destroy or damage someone's property. So we go back to the basic criminal damage, as per Section 1.1. The actus reus here is destroying or, or damaging a property, and it must belong to another person. If it's your own property, that's acceptable. You burn your own book you key your own car, you smash up your own furniture, there's no offence there. The mens rea here is intention or recklessness about do it, doing this to destroy a damaged property, as in you do it on purpose, or you do something which, whilst not intended to do to, to destroy a damaged property, um, accepts there's a considerable chance and you go ahead anyway. Um, now, um, there, is a, there is a valid defence which is with lawful excuse. If you've got a lawful excuse to do these things, then that's not guilty. Um, okay, so let's look at the actus reus. Well, Samuels and Stubbs was an important case about this, and it said that these terms need no definition. Perhaps surprising. Uh, there's another important case, um, A, a juvenile against R. A juvenile as in someone below the age of 18 at the time of the offence. By the time the case came to court, the person could be over there, over the age of 18. Remember, generally speaking, if a minor is charged with a crime, then his or her identity is kept secret. Um, uh, OK, there's Hardman against Chief Constable um, Avon, of Avon and Somerset Police, Rowe against Kingerley, Morvatas against Salmon, and R against Fiak, F-I-A-K. I think I hope I pronounced it correctly. Um, so um, destroy or damaging things. Hmm. Well, according to Samuels and Stubbs, this is a matter of fact and a matter of severity. Um, if you've, if you've um, damaged it very slightly, then that won't be criminal damage. Walking on the grass, well, you've damaged the grass somehow. You know, that's not that's not a crime. If this uh, the, the harm you've done is best, barely perceptible, won't be regarded as a crime. You borrowed a book from the library and the page is a bit dog-eared. You fold one over, fold it back again. That wouldn't count as damage on a criminous level. So, however, the damage could be something transient. It could be something that's, that's easily put right, but might still qualify as criminal damage. So what the court will examine is the expense or effort needed to put the damage right, um, how much it reduces the value of the item which has been damaged, or it was destroyed, well then it's lost all value, and um, uh, how much you've hampered its, its um, uh, utility. If it's no longer usable, um, then you damage it very severely, possibly destroyed it. If the damage you wrought um, has not impaired it um, significantly, or not met it at all, probably not criminal damage. So the actus reus, remember, this must be formed against property. So you want to look at the um, uh, Criminal Damage Act 1971, um, sections Section 10.1 about that. R against Whiteley. It's an important case uh, where it emphasised this must be property belonging to someone else. If it belongs to the defendant, that's no criminal damage. Um, OK, so uh, the Criminal Damage Act, um, Section 10.2, it's about that. L looking at the mens rea again, 
is intention or recklessness. These come up in criminal law again and again, intention or recklessness to destroy or to injure property. And R against G is a case about recklessness. So in R against G, it was found that a person who acts recklessly, as per section one of the Criminal Damage Act, um, if a, um, a circumstance uh, when he is aware of a risk that exists or will exist. Um, so pause there. So he does something, um, he doesn't aim to destroy a damaged property, but he realizes that there's a serious chance he'll destroy a damaged property, and he goes ahead anyway, not caring if he, if he causes this, this um, destruction or damage. Um, and he, the, he, the result, uh, when he's aware of the risk, that it will occur. Okay, so um, in this situation, uh, it's unreasonable to take that risk. Okay, there are situations where it's reasonable to go ahead and take a risk, knowing that you might destroy damage or property, but for whatever reason, it's, it's a reasonable thing to do. But the Chief Constable Somerset and Avon against Shimon is a case about that. So mens rea here, the defendant must realise that property belongs to another, um, or that it might belong to another. If it's his own, there's no crime. If he um, uh, believes it's his um, and destroys it, actually turns out he's wrong, belongs to someone else, um, he's not guilty. R against Smith is a case about this. So he must wish to damage or destroy the property, and he must be cognizant that his actions could lead to the destruction or the injury thereof. Um, so prosecution sometimes is sometimes proceeds on the basis of recklessness. And they must say that in the situation, um, this risk was an unreasonable one to take. There was no extenuating circumstances which made it permissible to take such a risk. So and remember, if he's got a lawful excuse, that's not guilty. Uh, that's uh, the Criminal Damage Act 1971, Section 5. So um, if the defendant believes that the owner agreed to what was done, to the damage or destruction, or believe that the owner would have agreed had he known, again, that's no, that's no crime. Supposing so a woman has got her boyfriend's trousers, gonna do him a favour, cut them into shorts, she cuts them into shorts, there you are. What? I never agreed to do that, I didn't want you to do that. But if she was trying to help him, she believed he would say yes if he knew, then that would be no crime. Um, okay, so uh, assuming that um, the damage was needed in order to protect other property, belonging to the defender of someone else, as per section 5.2b, uh, then that's not a crime. For example, when you have to start one of those fires to stop another fire advancing, that might be one. Or you have to pile up furniture in front of a door to stop flood water coming in or something, and the flood water damages some of that furniture but saves the rest of the house. Okay, you've caused some criminal damage, might be somebody else's furniture, but that would probably be considered a lawful excuse because the damage wrought was needed in order to save other property belonging to um, oneself or to another person. So, um, Let's look at the defense of consent as per section 5.2a. Um, um, so uh, if the defendant um, thinks the, pro the owner of the property consented or would give consent if he knew, then that's a valid defense. Um, if, um, the, if the defendant believes that the owner consents, um, then that's a proper defense. Um, the defendant might turn out to be wrong, but if he genuinely believes that the owner consented, then the defendant is not guilty. So this is a subjective test as per section 5.3. Jaggard against Dickinson is a key case here. So carrying on with consent in section 5.2a, um, we, we have to look at the motive for D's act. That's pertinent. R against Denton is there, which is, it is, is fascinating because in many criminal cases, motive is irrelevant. So um, can God consent to damage? That was, a, that was a question that was asked in Blake against um, uh, DPP. So um, there are the, one of the defences I cited was defence of property. So um, that's per section 5.2b. So if the defendant is doing something to uh, save property, then he's got a valid defence. Uh, that was found in R against Baker and Wilkins. Or section, section 5.2b1. Uh, if the defendant believes the property needs to be uh, protected instantly, you have no time to tarry, then that would be a proper defence. St. Johnson against Director of Public Prosecutions. Or Section 5.2b2, uh, if the defendant believes that um, what he's doing to safeguard property is reasonable in that situation, then again, he's got a proper defence. So, um, 
and what he's doing must be an action which is um, objectively regarded as um, able to protect property. The example I cited of piling furniture against the door when a flood is coming and some of the some of the some of the um, water leaks in and it does damage that household furniture. But if you hadn't done that, the flood water would have come much further into the house and damaged more property. There are cases about this, such as R against Hunt, R against Hill and Hall, Blake against DPP. So there can be other lawful excuses, as per Section 5.5 provides for self-defence, um, or duress, I was forced to do so, or I had to do so in order to save myself, something like that. Um, okay, so uh, look at aggravated criminal damage. So this is as per Section um, 1.2 of the Criminal Damage Act. That's the Actus Reus, which is destroying a damaging property which belongs to um, someone else or indeed to the defendant. This is the notable thing about aggravated criminal damage. It could even be his own property that he's damaging or destroying and still a crime. The rest of criminal damage, that won't operate. If it's your own property, you're allowed to destroy or damage it. So the mens rea here is intention or recklessness to break, burn or um, harm property. And the intention is there to, is to um, uh, put people's lives in danger. Um, it do, you don't need to actually endanger life. It's enough that your intention was in to endanger life or your recklessness to endangering life. Um, let's say, say, burning down a building. Nobody's um, in it, but there's a risk the fire could spread to another building. It doesn't spread to another building, but nonetheless, that was still held to be to be um, that was still held to be criminal damage. R against Sanger is a case about that. Although the particulars I cited were imaginary, that's not that's not the the, the factual case in an R against Sanger of burning down a building. So um, the danger to life uh, is something which should be foreseeable and must be due to the damage wrought, um, okay, and not from the cause of the damage. That was found in R against Steer, R against Studley, and indeed R against Webster. So um, aggravated criminal damage must be without lawful excuse. If you've got a lawful excuse to do it, you're in the clear. Section 5.2 defences are inapplicable here, and Section 1.2 to the Section 1.2 offence. So um, there's arson and aggravated arson, as provided for by the Criminal Damage Act, Section 1.3. So and here's a direct quotation. An offence committed under this section by destroying or damaging property by fire shall be charged as arson. So um, remember, if you threaten to damage or destroy the property of another, but don't actually fulfill that threat, that is still a criminal offence. The actus reus here is threatening another person to destroy or damage property belonging to him or indeed to a third party. Um, part of section two, more of the crime is to destroy or damage his own property in a way that he knows endangers the life of a third person, um, right? So notice has to be endangering the life of that other person you're speaking to or to a third party. So I'm going to burn down my, my whatever, but that fire could spread to your place and kill you. That would be um, uh, an, an illegal act, threatening damage property in a way that um, jeopardizes the life of another. So the mens rea here is intending that the other would be frightened um, that the, the threat would be carried out. So presumably if it's a completely incredible threat, then um, it's not a crime. So now coming on to section three, there's possession of items with intent to destroy or damage property. So the actus reus here is to have anything in your possession or um, custody. So um, the mens rea here is um, intending to deploy it or permit another to deploy it in order to destroy or damage property to belong to another person or to destroy or damage property of one's own um, in such a way that you know that it's going to um, put the life of someone else at risk. So notice here, this could be an item you're gonna use against your own property and steal a crime, so long as that will cause a danger to the life of another person. Not to the property of another person, that's not sufficient. It's got to be to human life. Um, okay, so that's enough about um, criminal damage, smashing windows, scratching cars, things like that. These are all acts of criminal damage. So please book online lessons with me in law and lots of other subjects. Please donate to me liberally on PayPal. I'm George Callahan 79 at gmail.com. That's all small letters. Callahan spelled C-A-L-L-A-G-H-A-N. Toodaloo.